Hi, I'm here with Jean-Pierre from NG. Jean-Pierre, what's the key message on climate that NG is making this year? Well, this year we've seen the development of an incredibly impactful health crisis, uh, which demonstrates how fragile our societies are. In less than a week, half of the humanity was confined and we are still seeing lasting impact on the way we work, on the way we live in our societies, we see friends and, uh, and so on. So I think the clear message is the vulnerability and the need to make our societies more resilient. Second message, a bit uh, on a more positive side, is the fact that uh, we've been able to react very quickly. In a company like NG, in less than two days, we put 50,000 people on home office, things which were seen as impossible. So breakthroughs are possible and quick responses uh, to uh, the challenges that the planet is facing are indeed reality. And probably the third point, which is more uh, what we see today, in a lot of geographies, we are seeing public authorities, governments, central banks, supporting the recovery of the, of the economy with plans. Uh, and these plans, most of them have a very significant part, which is focused on sustainability and fight against climate change. So it tells me that there's a lot of opportunities in front of us uh, to make sure that we speed up our response to the climate change crisis, which is likely to be the next big crisis that the planet is, uh, is facing. And in Europe, in France, in Germany, we see strong focus on hydrogen, we see strong focus on building efficiencies, like in, uh, building uh, uh, city infrastructure, which help uh, cities to be more resilient. So all of this gives us a lot of opportunities to move faster to make sure that we fight indeed against climate change. Thank you. Um, could you say a little now on how the events of 2020 have changed how NG is confronting climate change? Well, besides what I was mentioning about the, this crisis, I would, uh, I would refer to a couple of things. Uh, this year, we have decided at NG to include in our purpose, in the company bylaws, the fact that NG is dedicated uh, to participate in the fight against climate change and to help its customers and itself, its partners, I should say, uh, and the company itself move in the direction of a zero carbon uh, scenario. And uh, putting that in our bylaws was a very strong message. I mean, we got obviously a strong support from our shareholder uh, in, this, uh, in this process. And this is something which is symbolic, but in our view, as a real there's a really strong message behind that, but even more important than the strategy, the purpose of NG is to focus on zero carbon transition. Practically speaking, we have decided this year to speed up the exit from coal. Uh, this is something that we've started uh, some years ago and the company is among the, uh, the large utilities. Uh, one who has indeed uh, taken this subject very, very seriously. So we've reduced our carbon footprint, very, our coal footprint very significantly. We want to speed up the final exit from coal. At the same time, we have decided to increase very significantly the amount of capex that we are putting on renewable. We recognize that renewable uh, uh, are indeed uh, becoming more and more important in the uh, energy mix of a number of countries. Uh, we are a large developer of renewable uh, and we have decided to commit a very significantly higher amount of money, and I'm talking billions, to speed up our development on renewable and at the same time we have identified city infrastructures uh, district heating and cooling um, ev uh, charging networks as another priority we we want to have the resources to support uh, our partners local governments uh, in their fight against climate change and so these are some very practical measures that we have taken in 2020 uh, to make sure that we speed up our efforts to participate in the fight against climate change. It's great to hear that progress across a number of areas from renewables to transport aspects of this. Um, I was interested now to ask why you've chosen Climate Week NYC as a key moment to share the work you're doing, in particular with the postponement of COP26 from this year. How is Climate Week playing a part for NG in maintaining momentum over the next 18 months? 
uh, as you said, the, uh, the COP meeting will be, uh, will be canceled. So Climate Week was and will be even more this year, although in a different form, an opportunity to bring together the leaders, corporation, uh, governments, uh, NGOs, uh, other type of stakeholders. So for us, it's a great opportunity to engage uh, with these uh, people who are willing to be uh, leaders in the fight against climate change. Uh, last year, we took the opportunity of, uh, of the Climate Week to launch what we call NG Impact. It's our strategic consulting organization, which focuses on large corporations and local governments to help them develop the zero carbon transition scenario. Uh, so we are uh, a year later, we have developed a number of programs, projects. We are starting to see uh, very significant results coming from, from this. So Climate Week will be an opportunity uh, to reconnect with uh, the people we've met uh, a year ago to show them the progress we've made and to make sure that we can continue uh, move forward. And more generally speaking, I think it's very important to bring uh, the, uh, I would say the forward thinking players, again, corporation, governments, NGO, and a few others to bring them together because I'm convinced that to win this battle against climate change, we need to work together. I mean, it's uh, not just one company, one government. We need to make sure that we align effort, resources along supply chains when uh, we are talking about cooperation and industries with governments. Uh, and Climate Week indeed will be the key event uh, for this last part of 2020, uh, where we have the opportunity to bring people together. It's, it's exciting there to hear you talk about the sort of range of organisations you're working with and how Climate Week supports that. I wonder just finally, perhaps if you could share a few words on how NG has collaborated with other organisations that share the same goals as the company to move forward on your, your climate ambitions. Well, f f first thing, uh, again, I'm, uh, I have a long career in industries and I'm, uh, I'm absolutely convinced but to be successful in this, uh, in the very big challenge that we are willing to tackle, we need to work along supply chain. Suppliers, mm -hmm. customers uh, working together, and in some cases it goes uh, pretty far along the, along the lines. And Climate Week and other uh, events are an opportunity for us to meet with people downstream from us. Usually we are more on the upstream part of the supply chain, supplying uh, energy and, uh, and solutions to our customers. And if I look, Outside of the, of the corporate world, we are a pretty active participant in WBCSD. I am myself uh, for a few more, uh, few more months uh, vice chairman of WBCSD. So WBCSD is another organization. It's kind of a permanent organization where we also bring together the, for, the forward thinking, the forward looking company. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. But uh, I think that there's a number of other organizations, European Roundtable of Industrialists, to mention uh, one of them, where we can share our views. And frankly speaking, each time we have the opportunity to uh, engage with other stakeholders, we gain energy, enthusiasm, and we need this to be successful in this uh, very, very crucial fight against climate change. Okay, well, wonderful. Thanks so much for joining us, Jean-Pierre. It's been really exciting to hear the insight you've had about the company's progress and of course the plans for the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you.